What's up ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Today we are gonna cover unit testing, integration testing, database access. Database access means somebody somewhere is requesting a server to access data from a database. So the server has some kind of API behind it or perhaps it's an orchestration layer to go get that data from this database. So it could either be direct access or it could be a bunch of other microservices or other APIs that have pieces of the database of data you want. Testing databases is often challenging even without schemas and things like that, mainly because a lot of people feel like they have to have a database stood up somewhere to test it, which is not true. You don't have to have it because there's so much domain knowledge, meaning like what does a person mean or at our business? What does a part if manufacturing? Those kind of words and nomenclature they know about and the services know about and it's so tightly mingled that they have to have everything stood up just so and connected so they can test it and that's a real pain. So we're gonna show you how to break it apart again. It's just like working out. If people come up to me and ask about, you know, what kind of supplement should I take about working out? I'm like, are you sleeping first enough, eight hours or six hours enough? Are you eating enough after that? And are you even counting macros? If you're not doing the basics, you don't even need to worry about everything else. Start with the basics, get that right first. So in our case, we're gonna start with unit tests first, then work our way to integration testing so we can unit test and integration test our database. Before we set out on this large endeavor, let's take a look at the architecture that we have currently. We're gonna go to our first bash here, and what we have running is MongoD. I'm gonna start it. It runs the Mongo database as a daemon in the background. So we can have Mongo running, we can query its data, see if it's there, and it allows us to play with the database locally. It's reasonably easy to set up locally on a Mac. You're more than welcome to use Docker or something else that already has this pre-built so you don't have to worry about configuration. We have stood up a local database just to show that it's pulling real data. And if you go through the Mongo tutorials, they have a sample data set for restaurants, which I've already imported. To make it easy, we have a script here called MongoD, which handles running MongoD with the database data that I've set in this particular path, rather than the default that it comes with. So I'm gonna say npm run mongod. It'll start up the database and you can now access it locally to connect to it. If it's running on your local machine, you can access, make database calls and things like that. So let's go play with it. We're gonna run something called Mongo, which is the way to actually play with Mongo database locally. This automatically connects to the local daemon. So we're gonna say use test, which is the database name that I have in there with the sample data to play with. Thousands and thousands of restaurants. To switch to DB test, now we're gonna say a basic query, DB, which is database, restaurants.find. And it'll find all, since I didn't supply anything inside of here, so it's gonna find all our restaurants. And this is just normal Mongo shell access code. It's not JavaScript, this is just you writing on terminal, playing with the database. Every database has some form of shell access or SQL command line access. So you can see there's tons of JSON, a lot of great data in there we can play with. Access is JSON, feels great. To access that data, we're using the native Mongo client for Node. What it allows us to do is connect to Mongo database, run basic queries on it. We can search, delete, update, anything you can do in CRUD, create, update, delete, you can do that client. So you simply instantiate it and connect to MongoDB localhost in this port. And this is the default that it normally runs when you're running locally. The database name you want to connect to is right there. So slash whatever the database name is. Mine is test. That's where I put all. And you can have multiple databases on the same Mongo client. The rest of it is the normal Restify API that we've been doing in Node. It has two calls, ping to verify that she's even alive, and data, which takes a zip code, verifies it's legit, connects to Mongo, and says, all right, let's take a look at all the restaurants we have. Does any of them on their address match the zip code that we passed in. If so, great, send back that data as an array, otherwise blow up. So when we run this, let's do an npm start here, which will run this file right here. So you see it's listening. Let's go to ping and reload. Good to go. So let's check out data here. If we do the default zip code of Manhattan, one of my favorite places in the world, you can see that we have tons of restaurants based on that zip code in New York. And Keep going down, down, down. So you'll notice a, a restaurant, our domain model of what a restaurant means, the ID field that Mongo has unique ID for that particular item, the address of the restaurant, the borough that it's in, the cuisine of, that it serves, the grades that it's received over the time, the name of it, and the general ID for it. So this is what we consider a restaurant. We'll get a big old array of these. We'd often use that to display in a client, such as an iOS app, Android app, Angular and React application, or even just a basic web page. This JSON data is wonderful. It's coming from Node directly from Mongo. You'll notice if we send in my address, my zip code, 
23116, there is nothing nearby. That's okay, it doesn't blow up. But it has some problems. We can omit the zip code and it gives us an error, which is like a string. There's a few other weird things that happen. What we're gonna do is reduce the surface area of this, put the actual Mongo parts to the edge, and we're gonna break this function down in this REST API call down. So it's a lot easier to unit test, a lot easier to integration test. We'll start there. Once we get this down pat, then we'll go to schemas. If you got any other questions, hit me up. My name is Jesse Warden here to help you. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see y'all tomorrow.